Okay, um, hello everyone. Okay, so let's talk about how to create a string object, right? So I'm going to just write a regular integer literal in my program. I'm just going to type in four over here, right? I haven't written it any anywhere specific. I just wrote it in white space, and this is the number four. It's an integer literal in my program. That's all. Anytime I do this, that's all. That's all that happens. The number is written to the program, and that's it. Now, we've talked about the fact that strings are objects, right? And so we said strings are a series of characters, right, surrounded with double quotations. By doing this, right, anytime I create this string literal here, right, I have, anytime I create a string literal here, right, and I surround it with double quotations here, I have created a string object. So we we all agree that this is a string object because we we said strings are objects. Okay, they are not primitive data types; they are objects. All right. So anytime you basically create a string object in your program like this, sorry, sorry, uh, yeah, okay, so it's fine. Um, I, I I wanted to say something else. Okay, so anytime you create a string, a str you you write a string literal in your program like this, right? This is a string literal, and you surround it with double quotations, right? What you've done is you've created a string object, and what happens is a string the string object is created, all right? It's created in in memory. Anytime you do that, anytime you write a string literal surrounded with double quotations, you, a string object is created in memory, right? And that string object has a, a memory address, right? So let me not confuse you here. I just wanted to point out this first, and so I'll go ahead and I'll delete this. Now let's declare a class type variable that's going to hold a string object in the future, right? So we start with the name of the class that the programmers or the people who designed the Java language have basically designed. It's called string. And this string class, okay, is basically what we create our object from. And so we are specify specifying the type that this variable we are about to declare is going to have. So a string, right, this is the name of the class. And then we give it a name. Remember, in the previous program, or a couple of couple of uh, videos back, we created a string, and then the class type variable we called it full name, right? So this variable is in the future, right? It doesn't hold a string object yet. In the future, it's going to hold a string object, okay? Okay, or basically, it's going to hold an object created from the string class. Now I'm going to set it equal to. I'm going to initialize it to. The string literal over here, just uh, my full name here, sorry. I have created a string literal over here, and I've surrounded with, with it, it with double quotations. What, what does that mean? That means that I've basically created a, a string object. And anytime I do that, anytime you surround a, 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 a series of characters joined together, with um, the double quotations, a string object is created in memory, right? And when we assign it to the variable, now I need my semicolon here. When we assign this string object to the variable that we de designed, okay, to hold a, an object created from the string class, in other words, this variable is going to hold in the future a string object, an object from the string class. And we have basically assigned it here with a string object over here. What happens is we talked about the fact that class type variables don't hold the data themselves. They hold the memory address of the string object. Anytime we write a string literal with double quotation, we a string object is created in memory. And when we assign it to a variable that is that is designed to hold a string object, that variable doesn't hold the, the value, the string object, directly. It holds the memory address of it. And so this full name is holding the memory address, the location of the string object. This string object has been created in memory, all right. But over here, we ass we've assigned it to this variable. And this variable is not holding the value or the data directly. It's holding the location, the memory address, OK? The address, think, think of it as an address. Just think of it as an address. You don't really know what it is, but it's an address. It's a location. If you ask this, where is the string? Where is this string? You know, in in the, in, in the memory, it can tell you where it is because it knows the address. So this holds the address, the memory address of the string object. So that's what happens when you create um, a string object. Okay, I just wanted you to see this, and um, we will work more with strings so you have a sense of them. Um, okay, as, as we move forward. Okay.
So if you have any questions, please comment down below and I'll do everything to uh, respond to them. Um, now over here, I was, I was just about to end the video, but over here we can actually print it because we can actually print it um, regularly. We'll, we'll see more examples. So if I over here, I can just call system.out.println statement. And then I can print out full name here. So let's see what happens. Compile this, run it, and we can see it prints out this. So even though it's holding your memory address, right, it points to this this string object here. It points to it. So when I print out this variable, which holds the location, or which knows the location of this string object, it, it points, because it points to this object here, it prints out the object for us. We'll see more examples, so don't get confused if you are. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, comments down below, and I'll do everything to respond to them. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time with the next video. All right, then. Bye-bye.